I'm 35 years old and I just a few months ago I wrote the first check in my life. It was something for another at my, my son's public school and uh, there was a sports group or something I needed to pay for and I tried the debit cards and credit cards and Square and PayPal and all the normal things you would use when you want to give some people money. The one thing I didn't try was wire transfer because last time I tried that in the US bank I had to walk over to the office, fill out two pages on paper and spend like an hour. So I ended up putting pen on paper, I wrote the check. Then a few weeks ago I went to San Francisco. I parked on the street, get out of my car, parked my mobile, as any other normal person would do, and as I later found out, two or three minutes later, I had gotten a ticket for illegal parking. No big deal. Went to the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency website, where you can pay online for your tickets. Guess that you could also argue with them. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Print out two pages of paper, sign them on paper, get an envelope from somewhere, a stamp if you remember those things, and send off some, this entire stack of paper to kick off a two-week dialogue by snail mail, just to prove that you did nothing wrong. These stories from the 19th century would actually be quite amusing if they weren't that sad. Like, it, it's an ideal opportunity. I could pull many jokes about the horses and curries that are on my bank's logo in this country, but, <laughs> but just, just what makes them miserable for me is that if you start thinking deeper about the impact they have, the miserable waste they create for the society, that's one. Secondly, the context, what's around us, that makes it totally un, un, like, un, un, unimaginable how these things could happen today. And thirdly, I would like to share that, that there actually could be a future that should be here now that could look much better. So let's start with the waste first. Let's say just for the sake of exercise, let's say that you're spending 10 <coughs> minutes a week doing things that you don't want to do but sort of have to, the unnecessary bureaucratic burden. In a year, for you, that easily builds up to an entire working day. So you're spending one day a year. But it's not just you. There are 38 million people living in the state of California. So if you do the multiplications, you're looking at 100,000 human lives spent instead of working just doing this stuff in a year in the state of California alone. And I can understand that this formula maybe is a bit abstract, so let's translate it to something more understandable. It's 1,500 human lives wasted. And if you want to think US, just add a zero. 15,000 human lives. So it's like, it's just un un unimaginable. Secondly, we're in Silicon Valley. We're in heart of the place where all these beautiful consumer internet solutions come out of from. If you're using anything on the internet that allows you to search for things or share pictures or watch movies or listen to music or find a date or buy something, most of these applications come from this part of the world. Why is that? That if the front page of Facebook loads two seconds slower, you become anxious. But if you're spending two hours more in a line in DMV, you think it's normal. There is no way to argue that that would be for lack of the right technologies or lack of talent or lack of experience building great user interfaces for these things to be so broken. Things that you have to do shouldn't be as any harder than the things you actually want to do. So how many of you actually know, I come from Estonia, how many of you actually know where Estonia is? <laughs> <laughs> As this is Stanford and the map is invisible on screen, uh, this is a pretty good score. And, and if, if, I, if I had to venture, probably the stories that you might have heard if it's your first time to hear about Estonia would be that um, that little unfortunate incident we had with a certain communist superpower who occupied us for 50 years, or the fact that it, even this time of year it can get quite cold and dark and snowy uh, so far up north. But there's something else about Estonia that I would like to share today. The, uh, the, uh, there is a think tank called Freedom House in Washington, D.C. that publishes their annual report on freedom of the net. United States of America usually does quite well on that chart, and, and this last year you guys were number two. Because Estonia, of course, held the first spot. We have one million people online in this country, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you can Put it, to put it in perspective, we have 1.29 million people in the country overall. 
So for a while, we've had 100% of our government agencies and schools and most of our businesses online. And, and uh, that's pretty cool, but that is not something that unusual because the numbers are quite similar in the US, uh, I think. The 80% penetration is there. So it, what is more important is what we actually do when we're online. 99% of bank transactions in Estonia happen digitally. This means that you can joke about that there is 1% of people who are so rich in time that they can actually go to a bank, they can afford that waste. 94% of tax declarations are submitted online. And mind you, this is not like you go on a web page and start filling out the form about your life last year. This means that all this data flows throughout the year fluidly and digitally. So your tax submissions process is next, 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 submit. And if there is anything to get back, it's on your bank account two days later. We, Estonia signed a digital signature law already back in 2001, which means that by today, 92% of Estonians carry either a physical chip card or a software certificate on their mobile phone that allows them to sign anything digitally or prove to any website that this is how they, uh, that they are who they actually claim to be. And you can imagine that when you have that ubiquitous infrastructure, that opens up very interesting doors. For example, in 2005 already, we were the first nation in the world to hold nationwide elections over the internet. And in, by 2011, over a quarter of our parliamentary votes came from that. But what is more important is that this is not just a government thing. Any person can transact with any other person or company or the government, if they wish, in a secure and provable way. I'm sharing these stories about Estonia today just for a very simple reason. That's where I come from and that's what I know. If there are any people in the audience who come from Singapore or Finland or the Netherlands or many other small places in the world, you would have similar stories. So the point here is not about to brag or to host a competition of whose country is the coolest. My message here is that if you look at the computing power that each and every one of you are carrying in the pocket today, and the fact that you're always online, there's just no reason no excuse for the things you have to do to be so much harder than the things you want to do with these devices. And I would especially claim that, especially for Silicon Valley and especially for California, there is a future that should be here now, today. And for, if for no other reason for the fact that it has already arrived to so many other places that have similar or even less of technological advancement and talent around. So what I would urge you to do is that when you leave this campus and go back to businesses or nonprofits or the government work or whatever you choose to do, or just being a citizen, that don't stop demanding for these things to be better. Don't settle for the defaults. Don't like, like define that future and help to deliver that. Imagine a world where there is the DMV lines, the retail experience is designed by Apple. What would that world look like? And if you lack of any of that sort of inspiration, remember that there are some small countries in the world that would be happy to share. Thank you.